Hey, how's it going out there today, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day. Want to talk to you a little bit today about reefer units, refrigerated, temperature controlled, whatever you want to call it. The reason I like to refer to it as temperature controlled, one misconception, a lot of people think it just cools product, reefer trailers just cool products. Reefer trailers also have heaters in them, so we can keep product warm as well. Reefer units are really well insulated on the top and the bottom and the sides. Uh, to keep products at a certain temperature, not necessarily just cold. The load I'm picking up in the morning is a liquid load, and they want it to not freeze. And we're going into cold temperature, so we're going to set the reefer unit at 55 degrees, so our product does not freeze when we get into cold temperatures. So that's another aspect you know you can think of when you haul a reefer trailer is you can also keep loads from freezing. It's, it works both ways. It's a really nice setup. And I'm not here to uh, convert anybody to reefer unit. I'm just trying to educate people. Uh, if you feel like it's something you might be interested in, you know, hang out to the end of the video. I'm gonna show you how a reefer uh, unit works as far as like controlling the uh, head unit, the computer part of the trailer. So stick around for that. Uh, there's a lot of knowledge here. And like I said, I'm not trying to convert. I'm just trying to educate. So the way it works, there's a refrigeration and heating unit at the front of the trailer. There are chutes that go down the top of the trailer. Most of the time, it's just one chute down the front or, excuse me, down the center of the trailer. And it stops about, I don't know, three quarters of the way back. It blows cold air down to the back of the trailer. And then there's a return unit that pulls the air from the bottom back through the product. And you'll see later in the video, there is a picture of a reefer floor. They are usually aluminum and grooved. Like they go, uh, you know, up and down, up and down grooved. And that is so if they load the product straight on the floor with no pallets, uh, the cold air can still get underneath and cool the product from the bottom and the sides and the top. So that's kind of uh, what that's like, the, the basics of the trailer. And like I said, stick around to the end because there will be a quick tutorial on uh, how to operate that unit. Let's talk about what it's really like to haul reefer. Uh, people ask me a lot about trailer washouts. Um, I get on average maybe two washouts a month. I haul typically two loads a week, maybe three loads a week. Not every load requires a washout. If I'm hauling bulk raw meat, yes, I will get that washed out when I'm done. Uh, the load I just got done hauling was uh, like instant mashed potatoes. So they were on pallets, in, in boxes, in bags. You know, none of that got in the trailer. Other than the busted pallets, you know, uh, things like that, a little dirt. I'll blow that out with a leaf blower. We'll be good to go. Um, only when I haul, like, bulk meat do I really just need a washout. Getting a washout's no big deal. Find you a truck wash or a trailer wash. Normally, if you're near a meat processing plant or somewhere where a lot of raw meat gets delivered, um, like a production facility of some sort, there will be a trailer wash nearby. You know, it's it's business. If there's 50 trucks a day delivering there, there's 50 chances to get the wash out. So um, just go to the trailer wash. Tell them whenever you pull up, just tell them, hey, I need a trailer wash out. Uh, no big deal. They'll pull you right into bay. They'll open your doors. They'll get in there with a big pressure washer and they will wash everything out. Um, so it's no big deal. I mean, it's nothing, no, you know, nothing major. The price ranges on the trailer washout from like 30 bucks to 60 bucks, depending on where you're at in the country. Um, and I, I suggest you always check them afterward. You know, those people are in a hurry. They don't pay attention. It's your trailer that you're responsible for. So double check it after they get done. Cause you don't want to be at your shipper and then realize they missed a big spot. You'd rather get that while you're there. So that's trailer washout. A lot of people think and worry about that. No big deal. It's just a, it's a you know small part of the job. So uh, reefer fuel, you do have to buy reefer fuel. I typically fuel my reefer unit whenever I fuel my truck, and if I'm getting really good fuel mileage on the truck, or you know I'm not. Uh, it's not a load where I'm covering a lot of miles. I'm just waiting around a lot. I'll get that reefer unit filled every day or so. Um, it's not the end of the world. I spend on average about a hundred to two hundred dollars filling the reefer unit every week, so it's not a huge business expense. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. It's it's not that big a deal to pull. You know, the reefer unit's not that inconvenient to me. Um, let's see what else. 
Detention time. Yes, you will sit at these cold warehouses and these meat production facilities longer than you sit at your average dry van warehouse. It's just the way it is. It's cold product and it moves on a schedule that uh, is not yours. <laughs> it is their schedule. You are on their schedule. I suggest, um, you know, get your Netflix account paid up. Subscribe to me on YouTube. Watch all my videos while you're waiting over and over again. Uh, you know, it's a biased opinion, but hey, try it out for a while. See if it works for you. So yes, there is that. Um, but for me, as an owner-operator, Reefer pays enough to make it worth the sitting. And as an owner-operator, I'm more likely to get detention pay than with a company where, you know, like a mega carrier. Some smaller companies are really good about paying detention pay. So I don't mind to sit there and make money while I sit there. So to me... It's an advantage. I do recommend people, it, if you're going to be an owner-operator, Reefer is is nice, I think. As far as a company driver, I would have to be getting paid a lot more to do Reefer because you're not going to get as many miles. If you're in a position where you get paid by the mile, Reefer may not be for you as a company driver unless you have tons of drop and hook because you are going to be sitting around more than if you were pulling a drive van. It's just the fact of the matter. I'm just being honest with you. Um, let's see, what else is it? The reefer unit. A lot of people don't like the reefer unit, the sound of it while they're trying to sleep. Um, if it's on start and stop, it can be a little bit more noticeable, you know, because a reefer unit has two cycles. You'll find that out later in the video if you stick around. It has two cycles. One where the reefer unit runs nonstop at a steady temperature. And then you have cycle mode where it cools down to a certain temperature and then it cuts off and the temperature in the box goes up a little bit like your refrigerator at home. And then the compressor kicks back on and it brings that temperature back down to where it's set to. And then it lets it go back up naturally, you know, to turn off and the temperature will go up. So when it's in cycle mode, people notice it a little bit more. For me, it does not bother me. Um, there's times when I have to, uh, you know, stop and think about, is the reefer unit running? And it'll be running. I can hear it. It's just, it becomes background noise. And some people don't like that. So you got to keep that in mind. That's another thing. Um, but that's kind of what it's like running a reefer unit. Um, your delivery times are a little bit odd compared to just a normal dry van or a flatbed. A lot of 2 a.m. deliveries, a lot of these uh, grocery warehouses do the refrigerated receiving at night or early morning, like before the sun comes up, because they want to do it when it's cool outside. They don't want you opening the doors with fresh produce in there that's you know cooled down to 40 degrees or whatever 50 degrees in the middle of the summer you know they don't want their ice cream loads opened up when it's 100 degrees outside and backed into a dock because that stuff starts melting like super quick so that is one thing you're going to have some odd delivery times like i said not the end of the world for me but just giving you the heads up that's what it's like so stick around guys here's what it's like to control the head unit of the reefer All right, let me go over a little bit of this reefer unit here. Just want to show you guys. This is a Thermo King unit. A carrier unit is set up very similar. Uh, let me clean the display a little bit here. I think you can still see it even with the dirt on it. Um, this is your start, stop. Now that's different. This is on, this is off. Start and stop means if it's on a continuous run, it will run and hold a certain temperature the whole time. If you hit this, it turns it to cycle mode. On a carrier unit, it just says start, stop. But if you hit that, it'll run, it'll cool or heat to a certain temperature, and then it'll cut off. And then let's say you're cooling, it'll let the temperature rise a little bit, maybe like five to six, seven degrees. And then it'll cool it back down to that temperature that you have it set to. And it just cycles. It just can, completes, you know, keeps doing that. So let's turn this bad boy on and uh, let's see what we got. It does take a second to cycle on, so. Like if you've got something to do, uh, I say hit this button, especially if it's cold out, like you're doing your pre-trip, you're going to get a load. Hit this button, go ahead and let this thing cycle through and do its thing. So uh, we'll go through a few of the things you do here. Basically it's a waiting game until it cycles on. Um, while it cycles on, I'll explain a few of the uh, different parts of the trailer to you guys real quick. Here's the fuel tank. Looks like we're about, oh, a little over half full. That's good times, good times. This here is the front of the trailer. 
you flatbed guys, this is a motorized headache rack. All right, let's take a look inside the trailer. If you notice the floor has grooves, it is reeled for her pleasure. Right, we're set at 35. We're set at 35. We're currently at 35.8. Uh, it's in it's in cycle mode right now, so you know it'll kick on even if it's in cycle mode. It'll kick on and run for a minute uh, whenever you first turn it on. Let the diesel engine start. We'll go through a few of the processes here real quick. Um, and there you go. Now it started. And like I said, this is in cycle mode. So we're set at 35. We're currently 35.9. We'll let it run until it kicks off. I can kind of show you a few of the other things on it real quick. So, like I said, it's normally it wouldn't kick on at this temperature. It's just where we just turned it on. But a few things you need to know. Uh, let's see. Let's go to menu. Before you go pick up any kind of load, number one, if you've got alarms, like something wrong with a computer or a sensor, this is where it'll show up. And uh, if you've got one, this doesn't have any, but you just hit select, and then it'll give you an option to clear it. You just hit clear, and you're good. Go to next, run it through until you get to pre-trail. Before you go pick up a load, you go to pre-trail. Hit select. It takes about 5 to 20 minutes. It's got about 15 different parameters that it's going to check. So make sure you do that. Now, like, every day I check the oil. Uh, check the coolant. You pre-trip this just like you would your truck engine. You make sure your belts are on. You check your oil. You check your coolant. You make sure nothing's out of place. I turn it off when I do that. Just turn your unit off. It's, it's not going to ruin the product to be off for a minute or two. It's going to make no difference. So, we're at 35. We're cooling. We're, cool. we're set at 35. We're currently at 36. 35.9. We're coming down. Um, let's see, uh, sensors, I'll run through some of that for you real quick. Uh, so this is control return air temperature, it's coming back at 35 right now. Um, this is the discharge air temperature, this is what the Reaper unit's putting into the trailer right now. So that's a few of those. It just wrapped up, it's really going to start cooling down now. It's already so close to the actual temperature, it's not going to rev up for long. Um, so yeah, once it pulls down to like 34 maybe, uh, it's probably going to kick off again. So we'll let that uh, we'll let that run its course. It's coming down. Like I said, it's blowing 20 degree air in the box right now. So it's going to cool pretty quick. It's blowing 20 degree air in the box. That's not going to take long. You can check your gauges from here as well. Coolant temps at 143. This has been off for a minute, so it's kind of cooled down a little bit. Uh, coolant level okay. All pressure okay. All level okay. Amps, there's your amp. Battery voltage 4.2. Engine RPM. There you go. Discharge pressure is looking good. That's the that's at the rate it's pulling air back from the back of the trailer to cool it. get up there and physically check the oil and the coolant but I do just because you know you can have a bad sensor and you don't want this thing running with no oil in it or something like that so I physically check the oil every day in it you know I don't I don't trust the sensor hundred percent but if it's a really nasty rainy day or something uh, you know there's nothing wrong with checking it here occasionally but uh, you know it's like anything you do a good free trip on it you know once in a while maybe once twice a week there we go, we kicked off at 34.2. So that's the cycle mode. It's gonna let that temperature rise back up. Um, I'll, I'll add it in when it kicks back on because it's, 
uh, or maybe I won't. It's gonna take forever. It's cool outside right now. Um, so that's cycle mode. You got that on, it's in cycle mode. Now if you want this reefer unit to run non-stop and you do not want this temperature to vary any, like if I'm hauling an ice cream load, you would not put ice cream mode in start and stop. An ice cream load is gonna be negative 20 and you're gonna leave that running continuous. You do not want this engine to turn off for the fear that it may not turn back on. You know, like you wanna keep this running because it's gonna to have to work so hard to like keep negative 20, you don't want it to turn off. You'd rather just run a steady rate than have it turn off and then run really hard to get back on. So um, that's what's going on. I mean, I guess I could go open the doors and let all the cold air out, but to show you, uh, you know, to show you uh, when it would kick back on, but uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. And uh, you know, we're in cycle mode. See this, this is cycle mode. And uh, you know, if um, you know, if you want to go continuous, you just hit this, and it'll it'll program continuous mode. The diesel engine will cut back on, and it will just run continuously, and it will circulate air to maintain as close as it can to this 35 degree. When you go start and stop, like I said, it's going to run down to about 34. When this trailer temperature got back up to about 40, this would kick back on and run back down to 34. It would slowly let the temperature rise back up, just, you know, the ambient air temperature outside. Okay, let me show you how you set the temperature on this. So say my next load is 55 degrees. So you go to set point. You go up to the temperature they tell you to set the reefer to. Either the BOL will tell you or the broker will tell you or your dispatch will tell you. 55 degrees. Okay. Programming new set point. New set point is 55. That's all there is to it, kids. We're set at 55. The box is currently 40. So uh, that's how you do it, guys. There's not too much to running a reefer trailer.